Hello everyone and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Today I'm going to explain why I believe that Absolera is evolving into something like the Palantir of biotech. These two companies are obviously different, but they differ in two fundamental aspects. One, Palantir is an AI platform. Absolera is an emerging biotech platform. And when I went along Palantir at $7, Palantir was producing a lot of cash from operations. Absolera, although it's making good progress fundamentally, in terms of the capabilities of its platform is still very financially risky. They don't produce cash, revenue is down uh, year over year or something like that. You can go and look at the graph on the written form of the update. And so Absolera has a lot of financial risk. I'm obviously not your financial advisor and this is not, not financial advice, nor should it be interpreted as such. But now that I've said that and that I've made it clear that this company has a lot of financial risk, we can explore the fundamentals. Because Palantir didn't just one day spawn out of nowhere and produce cash. It was a process. And that's why I study companies which are in earlier stages than the ones that I own in my portfolio and track them over time, especially when I believe they are well managed and have extraordinary organizational properties. So Absolera is definitely on that bucket. ASTS is on that bucket. Rocket Lab. HelloFresh, I think, is coming along nicely. Uh, Rivian as well, actually, funnily enough. And so, if anything, these would be very venture capital kind of plays. They have, I have no room for them at the moment in my portfolio, but I might just start a mini venture capital portfolio. Anyways, you've heard me talk many times when I talk about HIMSS, about how I believe that the cure to any illness is basically having an in-depth real-time map of what's happening inside your body at the molecular level, and then being able to synthesize a molecule of any given shape which then you put into the body. And ultimately the function of that molecule is determined by its specific shape. So if you know exactly what is going wrong in the body, then you can come up with a molecule with a given shape, put it into the body, and then the illness is fixed. Ideally, it's actually prevented in the first place. So as I talked about in my original Absolera Deep Dive, which you can see in the blog for free, you can read it or you can look at the video here. Basically these guys started out with a platform that was making antibodies. That's how they made a lot lot of money from the year 2000 to the year 2022, because they made antibodies for the C word uh, thingy, which I don't really want to mention here because, you know, this is not a safe space. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, I don't want to mention these words here. You guys know why. And they made money like that. And so then they made a bunch of acquisitions, which enabled them to make molecules of specific shapes and just that do much more in the body. So one example is GPCRs, which stand for G-protein coupled receptors, which are basically receptors that sit on the outside of a cell. And then if you produce a ligand, which is a molecule of a specific shape and put it into the body, the ligand just goes up to the receptor, it binds. And then once the ligand binds to the GPCR, that basically triggers changes at the cellular level, which control anything from neurotransmission to hormone uh, hormone action, sensory perception, uh, immune response, cellular growth and differentiation. So basically a lot of things that go way beyond just antibodies. And so, as I was saying, Absolera made a bunch of acquisitions, which gave them this capability. They have one, which is for dual antibodies. Uh, so basically molecules that can bind onto two molecules at the same time. So if you want to do two jobs simultaneously, etc., then you can do it. And so Obviously, from a scientific standpoint, I think that Absolera's platform was very interesting to me a year and and a bit ago when I first studied it. But what's interesting in Q1 2025 is that two other molecules made it to the clinic, so to clinical trials. One is ABCL575, and the other one is called ABCL635. So the former is being um, trialed right now for a topic dermatitis, which is basically just inflammation of the skin. And then ABCL635 is being trialed for hot hot flashes in menopause. Why is this interesting? Because if these two molecules make it through the clinical trials, I believe that then Absolera's operating leverage likely goes to an inflection point soon after that. So we talked about the financial risk and you don't even have to spend a lot of time looking at the financials. They are just pretty abysmal. But Here's what's interesting. These two molecules, ABCL575 and 635, both leverage similar pathways, biological pathways, 
which are actually core to many other biological processes in the body. Meaning, if these molecules work in the clinic for these two specific applications, then it likely won't take time for Absolera to obviously scale those two applications up, then find more applications for the drugs in question, and then bring more molecules to the clinic that leverage these biological pathways. So for example, ABCL575 basically allows you to control your immune system, your T cells. It basically targets the OX40 pathway, which uh, basically when this molecule binds onto that receptor, the OX40 receptor, it helps regulate the activity of T cells, which we know are fundamental in the immune system. Um, and obviously, why, why the link with atopic dermatitis? Well, in my experience, and you guys know I've, I've been through some things, over the past few years, many of these things like, you know, obviously skin conditions, digestive conditions, musculoskeletal conditions, etc., they often come down to underlying chronic infections, which the immune system is not clearing. So I'm personally not surprised that ABCL 575, which ultimately regulates the immune system, in this case, upregulates it or downregulates it, whatever, it's not a surprise that it's being trialed for atopic dermatitis. There's so many other things that people go and get superficial treatments for in order to just fix the condition, sorry, the symptoms, which actually come down to not having an immune system that's clearing underlying infections effectively. And so lots that you can do with the OX40 pathway. Similarly, ABCL635 targets the NK3R receptor, which is found in the brain. And it, if, if I remember correctly, it deals with... Um, stuff in terms of how you regulate your temperature, right? So basically these two, these two molecules come from the same fundamental thing, which is ABCLs, Absolera's ability to synthesize a molecule of a specific shape, put it into the body, have the molecule then bind to a specific receptor, thus controlling some physiological process in the body. So again, if these two molecules make it through the clinic, I believe we we begin to see a tentative inflection point. None of this means that I think that our salary now is something like Palantir at $7. It just means that fundamentally, I see the progress of their platform. They, you know, relatively, I think they are quite ahead, far away from competition, similar to how Palantir has been positioning itself over the past decade and a bit. And so I like the situation that's being uh, presented here. And ultimately, it coincides with my view of how I think healthcare is going to evolve. So we talked about many times the importance of a live digital twin of your proteome. So an in-depth understanding of what's happening in your body at the molecular level, and then the ability to basically insert molecules of specific shapes just to affect changes all the way down to the cellular level, which is how I think actually that's actually medicine. So all illness stems from cellular dysfunction which, by the way, in turn also stems from mitochondrial dysfunction, which is why I like to talk about mitochondrial peptides a lot. But anyways, point is, this, I think, is becoming a foundational platform for biotech because we're going to have, I mean, the conception we have of medicine is medieval in that, you know, we, we try these drugs at random. We see if they work or not. We don't really check up on the side effects too much longitudinally over time. And then this is just the advent of full-scale precision medicine. And so I'm excited to see how these two molecules do, ABCL575 and ABCL635. And if they succeed in the clinical trials, I think there's very interesting times coming up ahead for ABCL. So guys, as always, thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this update, could you please share this with one friend? These deep dives slash updates are for free. So the only way this grows is with your help. If you guys want to go check out the written form of the update, check out the link in my YouTube bio. The blog is for free. Everything is for free. Apart from my course, which you can also take. Customers love it. Uh, most of you guys statistically will love it. I have a 14-day money back, no questions asked guarantee. And actually a very small percentage of customers that do buy the course ask for it. So at this stage, I can say the vast majority of you will absolutely love it. Anyways, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care. See you next time.